decellularization of plant tissues, cellulosic matrix for biomedical applications. Decellularization of plant tissues is becoming increasingly important nowadays. That's the reason why three different plant varieties were selected to compare them and to examine whether the method has a potential that is not limited to a specific plant. Spinach leaves were used due to their great vascular network pattern. Parsley shows a high porosity in the third plant, Solenostemon coleus shows a compact geometry and has great ability to store water. Decellularization is most effective with a 10% SDS solution. For further experiments, this method was used. Therefore, the plants were hung for three days in SDS in the container and covered with parafilm to prevent evaporation. To obtain completely decellularized leaves, it was necessary to follow the decellularization with the bleaching process. The decellularized leaves were treated 48 hours with a bleaching solution with 99% of sodium hypochlorite in 1% Triton X. After that, a few washing steps with the ionized water were necessary. After the successful decellularization, the leaf scaffold remains and with the microscope the surface of the decellularized Solenostemon coleus can be detected. Parsley shows specific stomata and spinach clearly shows the developed and intact venous branches. Decellularized plants have the ability to maintain their hierarchical hydrophilic arter structure. During perfusing ink, the vein structure remained largely intact. The next milestone was to recellularize the scaffolds. First of all, the petri dishes were treated with the plasma system to make the petri dishes more hydrophilic. The decellularized leaves were then attached to the petri dish with a biocompatible two-component dental glue. After 5 to 10 minutes, the mixed glue solidifies. After a short drying time, the prepared samples could be sterilized under the workbench with the UV light for 20 to 30 minutes. For the adherence, cells need FCS as a bridge to the cellulose matrix. The FCS was dropped onto the leaf and applied for approximately 30 minutes. Another experiment has examined the necessary of the coating. It could be seen that without FCS, significantly fewer cells are vital. After coating, the cells were sown at a concentration of 80,000 cells per leaf and filled with medium. The difference between standard cultivation on a well plate and on our culture scaffolds was detected. In order to check whether our cells are vital, we have performed a live dead staining with fluorescin, deacetate and propidimiodid. The results show that the cells are vital either at the beginning or after 5 days. In order to investigate the proliferation, we conducted an EDU assay. It turned out that cells proliferate and grow. After the successful colonization of fibroblasts, we tested other cell lines on our scaffolds. First, we tested an easy care cell line, SAUS2 cells. We performed a DAPI and the Wimentin immunostaining. Then, neuronal stem cells were cultivated on our scaffolds. After seven days, they differentiated in the neurons and we immunocytochemically detected them with a special neuronal marker for beta tubulin. In conclusion, it can be said that our project objective was achieved. We optimized the most suitable method for the decellularization of plant tissues. Recellularization was successfully performed with fibroblasts, sow cells and neuronal stem cells. This was proven by different methods. We would like to thank Professor Kemkemmer for the wonderful opportunity to carry out this project. We would also like to thank Kiriaki Atanasopoulou for her constant support and input for new ideas during the laboratory. A big thanks also goes to Angelika Dönay for her support and the materials we were allowed to use. Finally, we would like to thank Professor Just and his team from the Institute of Clinical Anatomy and Sun Analysis for their cooperation. They gifted us cells, materials and their time. Thank you for that.